discussing culture as an enabler for Atma Nirbhar Bharat, and we have two wonderful speakers with us, two illustrious speakers with us. To start with, Dr. Vinay Sahastra Budheji, a Rajya Sabha MP, and also the President for Indian Council for Cultural Relations, the soft power establishment for India. After the keynote address by Dr. Vinay Ji, we'll have a discussion between Dr. Vinay Sahastra Budhe and Dr. and Hari Kiran. Vadla Maniji, who is also the founder of Indic Academy, a think tank that nurtures and nourishes scholarship in Indology. He is also the founder of NICE, which is the network of Indian cultural enterprises. Now, before I invite Shri Vinay Sahasrabuddha Ji for the keynote address, I would request Anubha, AGM Legal and Policy from Vedanta, to just share a few uh, thoughts about this entire. Idea of cultural as an enabler or Atmanirbhar Bharat and the idea of Atmanirbhar Bharat as a whole. Thank you. Thanks very much, Tushar. Uh, namaste to everyone. It is said a people without the knowledge of their past history, origin, and culture is like a tree without roots. This was said by Marcus Garvey. In today's session, we hope to talk about those roots and how they can really help us bloom into an Atmanirbhar Bharat. Honorable President, Indian Council of Cultural Research and Member of Parliament, Rajya Sabha, Dr. Vinay Sahasrabuddhe, Sri Hari Kiran Vadlamani, Venture Capitalist and Entrepreneur, and Sri Amish Tripathi, Director of the Nehru Centre in London and celebrated author. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my absolute privilege to be here today to welcome all of you to the third session in a 10-part webinar series on the road to Atmanirbhar Bharat. We all know that the Honorable Prime Minister has laid out the vision for a self-reliant India and all of us have a critical role to play in turning that vision into reality. Well, I believe that this road to Atmanirbhar Bharat will lead us to prosperity through growth, job creation and import saving. It will also enable the Indian economy to become globally competitive. I'm absolutely delighted today that Swarajya has taken the initiative to organize this webinar series which is bringing together experts to deliberate on the future of this country. With these webinars, we are setting a dialogue and we are indeed starting a series of dialogues and opening many doors that will help us actualize our Prime Minister's unique vision. At Vedanta, we are tirelessly working towards creating an Atmanirbhar Bharat and it is indeed our pleasure and honor to associate with this wonderful venture by Swarajya. As experts with a clear vision for our country come together on this platform, we are sure at Vedanta that it will generate great ideas and will also facilitate their implementation in reality. It is my honor to welcome now Dr. Vinay Sahasrabuddhe with his in-depth knowledge about our culture, history, and how they can really play a critical role in contributing to our present and also our unique quest for Atmanirbharta. We look forward to his address and insights on how we can all contribute to the vision of the Prime Minister and our government. I also welcome Mr. Vadlamani and Mr. Amish Tripathi and very keenly look forward to an enriching discussion. Once again, I warmly welcome all of you and request you to join the exciting journey towards a strong and self-reliant India. Jai Hind. Thank you. Uh, thanks for uh, allowing me to share my thoughts and ideas with you. I think this uh, idea of uh, the quest for Atmanir Bar Bharat and in the context of uh, today's discussion, uh, in the context of culture, basically, uh, I think uh, it's something which uh, requires uh, some kind of uh, debate and discussions at every other level because we need to create this climate wherein we will be able to move in the direction of uh, Atmanirbharata on the basis of the treasure of our uh, culture, of our uh, civilizational values, or for that matter, the entire uh, uh, gamut of uh, 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 several issues which are uh, a part of our soft power, so to say. Atmanirbharata, I think, uh, requires that we need to know about the Atma itself because it is the Atma on which we are going to be nirbhar in the sense we are going to be dependent upon ourselves and therefore we need to understand what exactly we are. 
and this is a very very critical question because uh, many issues that are uh, affecting india as a country or indians as a society today are because of uh, our uh, ignorance about the strength of we our uh, uh, strength of all of us or the meaning of uh, uh, atma nirbharta and in that context the meaning of atma as well now in that context i believe what is what is first and foremost required is to understand that india is perhaps one of those countries perhaps few countries i must say about which there is a good amount of curiosity and a great amount of uh, goodwill as well in every nook and corner of the globe i haven't come across any country or any society where uh, indians are hated and refer indians and india as a country are welcome everywhere and this goodwill is one of the important uh, uh, treasure that uh, uh, our history our past has provided uh, to all of us uh, there the facts are very clear we were never an aggressor country uh, and uh, whatever our influence is basically because of our cultural prowess so to say and therefore we have a huge treasure of tro- soft power today in uh, also take the liberty of describing india as the super soft power perhaps but perhaps we need to be conscious about this and we need to be building upon this mere goodwill is not enough we have to convert we have to translate this goodwill into a proper understanding of india the idea of india unless and until we do that i am afraid india continues to be a riddle to many of the people in uh, the outer world uh, there are uh, people in academia there are people in media there are people in literature who know very little about india and perhaps have no clearer idea about what exactly india means because india is not just a piece of land india is a set of civilizational values and therefore all these things people need to understand all over the globe and to make them understand i think is our collective responsibility so in that context i believe the discussion about atmanirbharta on the basis of our culture starts with realizing what atma is and uh, the second aspect is of course about the civilizational values because when i say idea of india there are several uh, aspects of that for example it starts with our great tradition of spiritual democracy in our country we never said that only a particular way of worship should have hegemony or monopoly we always believed in ekam sat vipra bahuda vadanti and that uh, makes us stand apart from many others because we have always believed that uh, there has to be this approach of accommodation and which is why i think uh, kya baat hai ki hasti mitti nahi hamari as the poet had said the the the, the secret of our uh, uh, millennia old civilization lies in this secondly the way we worship nature our relationship with mother nature has not been that of uh, a conqueror kind of we have never uh, had that confrontationist approach we always believed that we have to be grateful to mother nature and op- try and understand the requirement uh, of mother nature and make changes in our lifestyles as well the, that is why we have been also even much before the discussion started in the united nations about sustainability that was something which was a part of our ethos so that is another feature of our, i would say the the, the way we uh deal with uh, issues of uh, sustainability because of our relationship with mother nature and uh, how we define that and translate it into our uh, day to day lives as well so in this context i believe and when it comes to atmanirbharta on the basis of culture i must also bring the point of uh, our very rich tradition of village artisans there are weavers there are uh, goldsmiths 
there are people who deal with various uh, metals there are people who are into woodwork so so on and so forth and the kind of diversity that we have we require to take to our stride at the same time try to have some kind of connection established with all the traditional artisans in every other part of the globe recently our indian council for cultural relations organized an international webinar on weaving relations through textile traditions and we had representatives of more than 12 countries and it was a delightful experience to understand how all of us i mean uh, uh, traditional artisans in every part of the globe are looking for some kind of uh, exchange between the design between the technology between the access to market and so on and so forth so these areas i believe we require to work uh, more aggressively more uh, vigorously and i believe there comes the importance of culture in the context of atmanirbharta there are other facets as well basically into academia and media as well wherein perhaps this is of our soft power we can influence we can make people understand india in the right perspective and thereby we perhaps can move towards atmanirbharta in the context of culture as well uh, i think these are the initial thoughts which uh, came to my mind uh, and i'll be joining the discussion as it flows thank you very much uh th thank you first and foremost for uh, for being a very big supporter of uh, uh, center for soft power we had the occasion of uh, hosting you at the namaste 2020 uh, thanks to your uh, collaboration we have been able to reach out to all the emb embassies and uh, we had a very good response uh, from uh, uh, from all the embassies and uh, namaste 2020 as well as recently our uh, ayurveda festival all have received uh, a very good response thanks to the uh, the support that iccr and uh, you yourself have been extending us from time to time thank you very much since then center for soft power has also incubated a network of indian cultural enterprises which is to be focused specifically on cultural entrepreneurship and like you have rightly pointed out some of the areas that we are focusing on are related to fashion and accessories which is the textiles area craft home accessories and uh, home decor which is what uh, you've been highlighting well being uh, which is ayurveda and food and beverages and experiential tourism these are the five areas that we have narrowed down which are all related to our culture in some form or the other that there is a global demand i uh, just like uh, you have been to, and also education we, we you, iccr has been at the forefront of uh, uh, education promoting education both externally and uh, as well as internally I, I would like to uh, uh, start with uh, 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 on the education aspect in terms of uh, what are your thoughts in terms of expanding the chairs into institutes, where the the Chinese model or a, 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 any other way in which we can uh, expand to overseas institutes. Uh, can you share your thoughts on that? Well, uh, our understanding has been that uh, the experiments with chairs. Uh, have not been very encouraging so far because even though we may be sending a good teacher over there uh, he or she unfortunately remains confined only to teaching a particular subject maybe if he is a hindi teacher or a sanskrit teacher or whatever but then the idea needs to be now evolved around some kind of a india study center in every other university wherever it is possible and the uh, concept on which currently we are working is we have some kind of an understanding india program under which uh, three four uh, subjects could be dealt with and according to the subject maybe two or three professors could be going there maybe three or four months each something of that kind so that what happens there is a cut role for all these uh, academics uh, who are going there and they finish their part and they come back Uh, this this is uh, economically and practically also 
more uh, convenient for because for an established teacher a good teacher to keep lean and go for uh, maybe one year two year three year is not very easy considering the shortage of good teachers in our country and uh, therefore uh, to get good teachers who can really go and become our cultural ambassadors abroad in the, in an academic center i think there are several limitations so we are currently we can have this uh, india study centers established with some kind of a partnership model that is one thing secondly we are also working upon uh, the policy of hiring uh, teachers from abroad itself for example take the case of yoga we have been and today also we are sending some teachers from here to teach yoga abroad but perhaps days are there today where uh, in london or in, uh, chicago or maybe even in uh, hong kong or singapore we need not send teachers from here there are uh, a good number of non resident indians who have made those particular parts their home and they are since they are well well versed not only well versed but they are professionally trained in the yogic sciences they can become teacher that also works very well because it is cheaper also it uh, helps us uh, avoid all other uh, uh, difficult questions like uh, uh, i mean his uh, going back there on a contract and then uh, when the contract finishes whether he or she will come back or whatever happens to that so all these issues could be dealt with more efficiently if we hire teachers from abroad itself so on that also we are currently working in terms of uh, uh, or soft power uh most of the countries which have the soft power education uh, is a very important criteria if we look at uh, how indians go to australia or the us or the uk um uh, in terms of inbound education iccr has also been uh, doing several initiatives um we may not have the higher education but at least what we found at uh, um at uh, csp was that the age between uh, 12th class onwards a lot of uh, students would like to come and experience india culturally uh, th th that has been an inbound uh, education uh, initiative that uh, there has been a very good resonance uh, can you sh uh, share some of your thoughts on that there are two, two initiatives on which we are currently working and uh, the first one is universal uh, un i mean we are trying to set up a portal just like uh, our experience with uh, portals like edx or uh, coursera for that matter where people go and do some short term course maybe 4 hour course 14 hour course 40 hour course whatever it is depending upon the depth of the curricula and everything so likewise we are uh, now evolving a portal called universalization of traditional indian knowledge systems which is utix under this we are going to provide courses on uh, a wide variety of issues subjects i mean right from uh, rangoli which is our traditional art to mehndi to various recipes of our traditional uh, uh, food varieties maybe uh, bengali uh, desserts or uh, maybe south indian uh, dishes or for that matter even introduction to veda introduction to yoga or a course on surya namaskar for that matter or a course on uh, understanding ramayan and mahabharat so all these things we are covering and uh, through that we will be able to reach to the global community and they can uh, sitting at their home uh, perhaps try to learn more about india uh, we are trying to have an agreement with the university at pune i mean the savitri bai phule pune university sooner than later i am sure this is going to be launched so this is point number 1 point number 2 we are also working on a core uh, course which is called as understanding india program and under that uh, there will be uh, various versions of it for example tourists who come over here if out of the 100 tourists that are visiting goa say for example even if i are uh, desirous of understanding india and not just uh, uh, merry making and enjoyment of the traditional type then we should be providing them a course which could be an evening course a week long course or it could be a more deep uh, and more serious course also there could be other versions of it one could be a certificate course another could be a something of that kind and such also could be 
provided to foreign students. For example, one idea on which uh, we are working is uh, there are several universities abroad and we are talking to the UGC and the Association of Indian Universities. With their help, we are trying to have some kind of an agreement between, say, Tashkan University and uh, uh, Anna University in Madras. Then what happens is that the Tashkan University uh, provides us a list of all their meritorious students who are rank holders, and we select 10 of them and bring them over here. Uh, all the travel the uh, concerned university, in this case Tashkan, and all the expenses of their 10 day in Understanding India program are to be taken care of by the Anna University. Likewise, next year, Anna University students can go to Tashkan and they can experience that country as well. So likewise, we can definitely contribute to the understanding of different cultures and thereby we can provide such exposure-based or experience-based learning as what you were suggesting to foreign students. So that is another program we are very actively working on. That's uh, wonderful, sir. Uh, in terms of uh, your uh, cultural centers, currently I think uh, you probably have around 39. Uh, are your plans uh, of expanding these centers uh, into areas where we have potential for export uh, of, our, of our cultural enterprises? Uh, what are your uh, current plans on that? See, we are definitely into that, but as it happens, uh, ICCR run center uh, many a times is a part of the policy because of uh, the situation over there. And then it becomes just another uh, Sarkari Prayas kind of a governmental effort. While we believe that, for example, I'm taking the example of Armenia. There is uh, a number of uh, Indians uh, who are staying in Armenia. They are into maybe uh, uh, some kind of commercial activities or some of them are employees also there. Now, they themselves have established an India center in Armenia, in the capital city of Armenia. So what we have done is we are ready to support them with, uh, say, musical instruments, books, or uh, maybe even uh, uh, some kind of uh, resource persons being sent from here, or doing uh, some activities together, I mean, supported by ICCR, but initiated by the center in Armenia for that matter. Likewise, a public-private partnership model is something which we are looking for. Because if that happens, then it becomes a more livelier kind of a scenario. I mean, uh, a, a center for a, a live wire center for uh, conducting activities and programs. That is what we are uh, currently thinking about. Yes, that's that's, uh, that's very good, sir. Uh, in, in terms of uh... Furthering uh, yoga, I mean, the, the, the way you have uh, gone about uh, every embassy, every cultural center promotes uh, the National Yoga Day. But uh, uh, one would feel that at this point, we would want more enterprises coming out of yoga in terms of more brands and more uh, businesses coming out of yoga, like more chain of studios. Uh, uh, it, 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 because even though... Yoga has come from here till such time we have actually started the National Yoga Day, I mean International Yoga Day. Uh, we have not generated uh, the large enterprises uh, like Lululemon, for example, started in a yoga studio and it is a, a billion dollar company. Uh, meditation apps. Uh, any, any thoughts on, uh, on how we can uh, encourage entrepreneurship in this specific uh, sector? See, in our country, this particular uh, assignment is handled by the Ayush Ministry, but we are in collaboration with them and we are now starting in collaboration with the Ayush Ministry, some kind of a yoga certification board. Because there is no authentic agency which certifies the authenticity of the instructional design of uh, yogic sciences or yoga training, whatever you may uh, describe. And therefore, this particular setup has uh, now been planned and I'm sure it will also start functioning in another three, four months. Uh, that is one thing. Secondly, we also have uh, greater understanding about yoga because yoga is not just physical exercises. It is not just about meditation. It is not just about breathing disciplines. It has every other thing uh, pertaining to well-being. And therefore, it's a science of well-being to create that holistic uh, understanding about uh, yoga. 
we have decided and we have started conducting international conferences on yoga in the in and uh, i mean around the international yoga day every year two such conferences happened the first in new york and the now in the uh, next year also we are going to do that so likewise uh, we may be working on that and lastly just like uh, indology and sanskrit and buddhist studies there are certain universities maybe not uh, not very the number may not be very high but there are few universities abroad that have a proper department of yoga or yogic science or whatever it may be we are trying to also collaborate with them bring them together as well and try to have as what you rightly said some kind of a bigger enterprise in the context of yoga thank you sir last uh, i think you have to leave at 5:30 last question i have is on uh, on the cuisine part which you have touched upon briefly uh, it, it, as you know the world's greatest trend now is uh, vegetarian vegan food and uh, our, our country has the maximum number of uh, range in, in in that and we have a lot to offer to the world any thoughts on uh, how iccr can promote uh, 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 indian cuisine overseas and any 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 initiatives basically we need to appreciate that uh, our culinary and cuisine traditions are a part of our soft power firstly then we also can think about uh, giving some accreditation to uh, restaurants that are saying that we serve indian food because we have seen restaurants which are talking about indian food but are being run by some other uh, countrymen doesn't matter but the authenticity of the food requires to be certified so whether we can do that kind of a effort it's something which we are exploring these days at the same time uh, those who are coming here in india as tourists whether we can also cultivate some kind of a culinary and cuisine tourism for that matter where they can try preparing couple of indian uh, dishes as well as a part of their uh, tourist experience that is also something uh, we are talking to the department of tourism also and uh, if they appreciate if they agree then i think we can move in this direction as well so people who are visiting uh, say chennai can try their hand in uh, preparing idlis or dosas as well for that matter likewise we can have the regional food varieties associated with this uh, culinary tour tour tourism if uh, that is something which uh, the ministry and others also accept and recognize thank you sir thank you very much i look forward thank you very much that was a very useful and engaging uh, discussion i look forward to engaging with you again uh, through nice and uh, looking at some kind of a cultural entrepreneurship courses or some kind of an engagement with iccr thank you so much no, no, sir we are very open minded and uh, all your suggestions and inputs are most welcome do meet with us and we we can work together on these issues thank you very much thank you tushar thank you all those who are associated with swaraj thank you